the best items in Act 2. All right, this includes, obviously, the Ruined Battlefield or the Shadow Cursed Lands, whatever you want to call it. And it also includes the Kresh Yelek, all right, uh, which is the Gif Yankee Stronghold, which I know it's an optional thing, but I recommend going there because there's some pretty sweet items and a lot of XP that you can get over there, all right? Um, so what do I mean by good items? I'm not going to show every single damn item. That's going to take way too long, okay? Ain't nobody got time for that. I'm going to show build enabling items uh good one-offs you know items just useful to be wearing as placeholders or items just useful to be to have in your inventory just in case something happens you know what i'm saying um some cool items i'm gonna show you all how to solve some puzzles here and there to get some some uh cool items as well i'm gonna talk about that as well later and yeah man just the stuff that i found in act two that was useful and i let me say this right now just in case if I miss something or is there an item if there's an item that you think that should have belonged in this list feel free to let me know in the comments you know obviously we can only we can only do so much in each playthrough right you can't be the good guy and the bad guy so may, there may have, there may have been some items that I might have missed I'm doing uh, a, a dark urge good guy playthrough because I haven't done that yet I just want to see what happens so if you've done a bad guy playthrough and, you, and you're like murdering everyone maybe I didn't uh, murder one of the good guys or one of the NPCs that drops a really good item you know what I'm saying so so yeah if there's an item that, he, that, that I missed while you're watching this video let me know L let me know what's up all right I um, the more I play this game the more I want to know about it obviously and like I said we can only do so much uh, with our playthrough so if you guys sh share your knowledge with me and that's better for all of us right with that being said here we go welcome to the best items in my opinion in act two of Baldur's gate three lady esther probably one of the first act two vendors that you're gonna find assuming you went through the mountain pass route and want to reach the gith yankee crush which i highly recommend by the way because there's a really good vendor over there which i'm going to show later in the video but lady esther she is the ch she is the lady that's looking for a gith yankee egg but she also is a vendor that sells some pretty decent items so let's go over them real quick first is the periapt of wound closure when downed automatically stabilized at the start of the turn maximize the number of hit points restored so the first thing when downed uh, it basically gives you a cheat death and the second thing potent healing maximize number of hit points restored So that doesn't mean when you heal someone they get the max amounts restored It means whenever you get healed you get the max amount restored Okay, so whoever is wearing this will get the max amount restored from anything For example, if you get healed for a 1d8 die you get healed for that full 8 All right, it does not work uh, the other way around. I wish it did but that may be a little bit too OP <laughs> Okay, um but yeah, this is a pretty good uh, amulet if you were looking for an alternative instead of the amulet of restoration. The amulet that gives healing word and mass healing word, which is, which is also a very solid item for your cleric or support character. But this is also a nice alternative and secondary just in case you don't want to use that. So parry at the wound closure, pretty solid. Next item that she has is the Gloves of Cinder and Sizzle. Your unarmed attacks deal an additional 1 to 4 damage and it comes with Scorching Ray. Any items that come with, with free damage spells pretty solid and of course i believe it comes off of a long rest it does okay um here's the thing for some reason larion studios decided to put a lot of monk items in this game i believe there are other elemental versions of these gloves there's a fire one like this one there's an ice one there's a thunder one there's a lightning one um there's a bunch of them for monks uh, because monks are pretty much the only ones that deal unarmed attacks okay i don't know why they wanted to put so many monk items but then again i kind of get it because monks are very underappreciated in DD and definitely not as powerful as they are in this game okay so if you're looking for some extra monk gloves here they are give you some extra fire damage gloves of cinder and sizzle the next item is probably the best item that I think Lady Esther has is the Graceful Cloth. You're, you gain Cat's Grace and increase your Dexterity Store by 2 to a maximum of 20. And you gain a plus 1 bonus to Dexterity Saving Throws and also increase, increase your Jump Distance by 1.5 meters. So, Cat's Grace basically means you have advantage on all your Dexterity Checks. That includes Sleight of Hand, Stealth, and Acrobatics. And of course, on top of that, it gives you plus 2 Dex. This early in the game, you're probably not going to be high enough level for your second ability score increase. So you're looking for that extra plus two dex to max out your dex to make you hit harder, to make you hit more often, to make you hit your checks uh, checks more often. You know what I'm saying? And on top of all of that, on top of the crats, cat's grace, and the plus two dex, 
you get a bonus to your saving throws or dexterity saving throws and increase your jump distance so this is a very solid cloth it is kind of glass cannony to where it only has 10 ac you know what i mean but if you if you're in the back line um or if you're one of those invis characters that are that are sneaky and don't get hit very often this is very good for maxing out your decks pretty early until replacing this armor later for a much you know defensive type of armor um because things start hitting a lot harder in the later acts but this is pretty solid early for maxing out your decks and the last item that i want to show for lady esther is the gloves of baneful striking whenever you deal damage with a, with a weapon attack the target receives a 1d4 penalty to its saving throw against your next spell so this is very good for gish characters or spellblade characters blade singer characters you know what i'm saying any character that likes to um, do damage with their weapon attacks either through melee or ranged or and like to cast some spells along the way too while concentrating on a spell or whatever this is very solid okay uh this is really good especially for the um the dual hand crossbow bard build that i showed you guys because if you hit them let's say you hit them with a weapon attack they now have a 1d4 penalty to your to, to your next spell that you're going to cast them then you cast something like hold monster and they're probably going to work and every and then every attack you hit land after that they will get automatically crit and yeah so this so these gloves can be comboed pretty damn well with some gish characters um ha half weapon attack half spellca spellcaster characters and if you want them you can find them here lady esther where is lady es es esther exactly well if you don't know now you know here is the entrance to the to the mountain pass that the game you know um uh, mar marks your map on when you're in act one here's the waypoint the first waypoint trail to crags you go a little you go a little uh to the top left here's the waypoint you go down here go down here she's waiting she'll give you a quest to to get a githyanki egg i believe that is the only useful part of the game for the githyanki egg personally i i, I wish the githyanki egg would hatch and you could raise it on your own but i don't but they, i guess they're gonna add that later in the future or something but i would recommend giving her the egg because it leads to a interesting interaction in act three okay so yeah that's lady esther in act two the dawn master's crest now this isn't an item that you can equip but it is an item to get a certain weapon that is pretty damn good which we're going to show a little bit later but i just want to show where to get the dawn master's crest so it, it is over here we are at the beginning of the crest yelek we haven't gone inside yet but here we go okay here is a trail to crag's waypoint we'll go up here go over here the crest okay this is like the the the, the second level all right you, you can you can open this uh so it's either it's inside it's inside this little compartment. You can either open this compartment through finding the four ceremonial uh, weapons and putting them on these platforms, or you can just lockpick it, or you can just use knock. <laughs> One of those three, probably using lockpicking or knock, it will be easier for you. Obviously, the, the DC is pretty high, but if you have a rogue in your party, it's probably going to be pretty easy. Um, and in this pouch is going to be the Dime Master's Crest, and this little note that you should read, and the Dime Master's Crest, again, is going to be the key to unlocking a certain item later that's going to be really, really strong. Ajaknir Jira. Excuse me if I said that wrong. <laughs> but that is the vendor over here at the crash. And you've probably run into this vendor, but in just in case you haven't, here it is. Let me show you where it is real quick. Okay, before we look at the items. Here's the crash. Here's the waypoint. Just go south into this little supply area. Talk to him. And this is one of the best vendors in the game. This is the beginning of Act 2. You can get these type of items. So let me go and show you what we got here, okay? First, the gloves of dexterity. Set the wearer's dex to 18, okay? And it also gives you a, a plus one to your attack roll. So this basically means uh, you can... Uh, no longer worry about decks if you're as long as you're wearing these gloves your decks will always be at 18 So if you are someone that's okay with not being your decks at max level, which is 20 uh, You can wear these gloves and not have to worry about decks ever again And instead you could respect your character and the points that you would use for decks you could put somewhere else like constitution for MRHP or whatever uh, Spellcasting modifier that your class has. Okay, so the gloves of, dex gloves of dexterity very strong um, any item that gives um like the warped hand of intellect that I showed you guys in, in the Act One video, any items that set your set your, set your stat to a high score uh, is very good because that means you could put the points elsewhere. Okay, so goes of dexterity. There you go. The next item, and probably the best item that this vendor is holding, or second best, uh, when I show you guys an item later, the Knife of the Undermountain King. Okay, so this knife, the wielder scores a crit when rolling a 19. When they roll two damage or less, reroll the dice, take the highest result. So, uh, it's uh, it, there are a lot, a lot of effects and items in this game that... Um, 
when you to make a critical roll do you, you could take a minus one off of that so um you can go as low as to like a if you can roll a 15 and if you have advantage on those rolls that means you're pretty much critting almost every hit okay so and of course when you reroll your damage dice it, it takes the higher amount so you're doing just more damage um on average all right and of course you have advantage on attack rolls against slightly or heavily obscured targets when using this blade and of course it is a plus two blade as well so if you are an assassin this is your go-to early uh, early mid game for sure maybe even later okay but there actually are some better items later in the game if you are a pure double dual wielding assassin but this this can not only be used in, a, in an assassin build but this is also a very good stat stick if you are a bow person in fact i'm definitely going to buy this and put this on my bowman because more crits and higher damage why not you know what i'm saying so knife of the undermanned king one of the best items that you could find early mid game okay Next item that I want to uh, show you guys on Ajak Nir Jira is the Daredevil Gloves. The wearer gains a plus one bonus spell attack rolls and uh, your ranged spell attacks are made as melee spell attacks when you are adjacent to a hostile creature. This basically means so normally in the game if you are a ranged user, if you are a bowman or if you are a, a spellcaster casting a cantrip uh, at range, normally those spells or attacks are at a disadvantage because targets are too close to you and they're considered threatening. Okay, you're gonna see a little a, a little threatening uh, status, but these gloves make it so if something is near you and you don't you don't want to waste your action on a disengage, you can turn this on and your ranged attack, uh, your ranged spell attack, will not be at a disadvantage. It will just be a normal attack, so you're probably still gonna hit them. Okay, these are pretty strong for Elders blasters. Um, or if you if you're just looking for a, a glove to fill in a slot as a placeholder for your spellcaster, so Daredevil gloves, pretty solid, especially if you're an Eldritch Blaster. Okay, and the last item that I want to show you guys is my favorite item that she has. This may not be the best, actually, it might it might be the best. Uh, and let me tell you why. So the Unseen Menace. First of all, it's two-handed, extra reach. Okay, so that means it, it reaches further than five meters a normal normal attack so if you're running a sentinel a sentinel person or a polar polar master person a combination of those one of the best builds in the game by the way um this would be a really good weapon to choose but not only that it's a plus one weapon but here's the best thing about this weapon the weapon is invisible while equipped it loses this property for two rounds on a missed attack roll if you don't know hovering over this invisible means the affected entity can't be disarmed, so you can't be disarmed. No one can use disarming attack or command drop against you. It's not going to work. And you have advantage on all attack rolls. All, all, all attack rolls. That's crazy. And not only that, it scores a crit when rolling a 19. So you can stack this weapon with the crit stacking items that I was talking about. And the reason why this is so good is because um, a lot of builds, a lot of builds that use Great Weapon Master... Um, some of the best feats for two-handed weapon users are Great Weapon Master, Polearm Master, and um, Sentinel. Okay, this would be the perfect weapon for that build because you would have great, the, the Great Weapon Master is the same thing as Sharpshooter. It takes a minus five penalty to your attack rolls, but it gets a plus ten to your damage rolls. Okay, um, and I would only run those builds if I if I had advantage or at least so many blessing buffs that I can never miss. All right, but having adva advantage on all your, on all your attacks totally disregards that minus five penalty to your attack roll. Okay, and of course the more crits the better. So if you're looking, if you're playing a Gish, if you're playing a Warlock slash Paladin, which I should have made a video on that by now. If you haven't seen it, go see it. Um, I would definitely use this weapon. Having advantage on attacks. Um, Without using the risky ring, uh, if you guys know about that that ring, I'm, I'm definitely going to show that a little bit later, is crazy, okay? it's it, You're just going to do more damage, you're going to hit more often, and you're going to use a cool-ass weapon like this, an invisible weapon, okay? So if you don't know, now you know, the Unseen Menace is a sleeper, truly, all right? So that is Ajak Nier, Jira at the Crush, one of the best vendors in the game. Diadem of Arcane Synergy. Now, what does this do? When you inflict a condition, gain Arcane Synergy for two rounds. What does that do? Let me go ahead. Arcane Synergy weapon attacks deal additional damage equal to affected entity spell casting modifier. This is really good for Rangers. Hunter's Mark is in fact 
in fact a condition actually i'm gonna go ahead and tell y'all it's really easy to affect to affect a condition or inflict a condition in this game when you push someone into condition when you uh stagger someone into condition when you prone someone into condition when you uh hex someone into condition it's super easy to condition someone so if if one of your um uh, this is especially good on a Gish character, a spellcaster slash, uh, you know, weapon user. Okay, especially good for those spell blades. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I like to use this on my rangers. I like to use this on my Gishes. It's super strong. And if you're just looking for extra damage, then to be honest, this is best in slot for quite a long time. All right. So Diadem of Arcane Synergy. This can be found over here at the Inquisitor Chamber. We are still at the Crest Yelek. All right. Here's the waypoint. You go up. You gotta do a little check in the captain's quarters. Make sure you can get past her. Okay. You can either kill her to get past, or you can you can make some uh, uh you can dialogue her, uh, her into it, which is pretty easy to do to be honest. Okay. You get in here, Inquisitor, and this is off of uh Ardent the 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 the, 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 the okay <laughs> not off the man guy in fact the man guy doesn't really have good items you know he has like this circlet of um of psionic revenge but it's really only good for gith yankees and to be honest it's not that good either i thought this item was much better this helm on this uh, one on one of his um one of his people's diadem of arcane synergy Strange Conduit Ring. While concentrating on a spell, the wearer's weapon attacks deal an additional 1 to 4 damage. This is, again, another really good weapon for rangers who are casting Hunter's Mark. Normally, if you're a ranger, you're not really getting hit anyway, so your concentration on Hunter's Mark is probably going to last the whole day. So, so in a sense, Strange Conduit Wing is best in slot for a lot of bow builds. Um, but, again, it can be used for Gishis as well. For, for spell, spell, spell blades, half spell casters, half weapon users, Strange Conduit Wing wing <laughs> ring this can be found in the same spot inquisitor's chamber it's in a chest in the middle of the room in fact you can get it and get out if you just go in biz and, and, and do that but you most likely want to progress through the story and take out these guys anyway but it's in, it's in this chest an elegant chest in the middle of the room strange conduit ring enjoy it gloves of belligerent skies thunderous conversion when the wearer deals thunder damage Lightning damage or radiant damage inflict two turns of reverberation on the target. Okay, reverberation. Uh, the entity has uh, minus one penalty to strength, dexterity, and constitution saving throws per remaining turn. So, at least uh, when you first do it, it'll be two. When the entity has four or more turns of bro, this word of reverb, it takes one to four thunder damage and possibly falls prone. The condition is removed afterwards. Creatures immune to thunder damage can't receive reverberation. So these gloves are pretty solid. Uh, you're probably going to have someone in your party dealing one types of these damage and they're probably going to have an open glove side at this point in the game. So why not wear these? You know what I'm saying? Um, you can find these at, we're still at the Inquisitor's Chamber at the Crest Yelek. You know what I'm saying? We're still here. Uh, the middle of the room is over here. The entrance is over here. You want to turn left, open this little elegant chest over here, and there you have the Gloves of Berlitherant Skies with the reverb. <laughs> Necklace of Elemental Augmentation. When one of your cantrips deals acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder damage, add your spell casting modifier to the damage dealt. Uh, this is a really good item for Eldritch Blasters out there. Okay, if you haven't seen my Eldritch Blast Demon video guide, uh, I suggest watching that. It's lightning based. And this item stacks on top of Agonizing Blast, it stacks on top of Potent Robe, and it stacks on top of uh, Sorcerer 6 Draconic Blue Lightning shit. Okay, it's it's really good. It's basically the idea of the concept of that build is to stack it up. All right, and this stacks even more spellcasting modifier to the damage dealt to Eldritch Blast. It kind of goes crazy. Also, if you're just dealing Fire Bolts or Ray of Frosts or whatever cantrips that deal one of these damage types, it's a, and you and you don't have a and you have an open amulet uh, slot. Why not wear this necklace of uh, elemental augmentation? Where do you want to get this? We are still at the Inquisitor's chamber. Okay, uh, our, our, here's the entrance. Okay, you want to walk in, center of the room, turn right, er, and it'll be in this gilded chest over here. Oh, that's wrong. Rusted chest over here. Oh, that's also wrong. Where the fuck is this bitch? Uh. Oh, in the display case. My bad. Okay, it's in the display case. Uh, all right. Bye. <laughs> the Skin Burster. When the wielder deals melee damage with this weapon, they gain two turns of Forest Conduit. What is Forest Conduit? Forest Conduit is bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage against the affected enemy is reduced by one per turn remaining. If the entity takes damage while it has five or more turns remaining, it deals one to four force damage in a six 
uh, meters radius. So that means if um, if you have um, more than five turns of Force Conduit, then you kind of you kind of have a reflection aura of Force Damage. Okay, and this item is really good if you don't want to use the Unseen Menace that I showed earlier to have advantage. If you're more of a tank on your team, if you're more of a Sentinel Polearm Master tank, this is really really good. You know, no, nothing can really run away from you, and if they try, or if they want to fight you, they're going to take damage all types of ways. So the Skin Burster, really, really good for those type of builds. Where it can be found? The same place that we found the Nexus Augmentation. This is where it was. It's in this opulent... It, it's, it'll be in the middle of the room right here. Let me just go ahead and, uh, and show you exactly how you're going to find this bitch. Okay, so here's the Skin Burster. You're going to find it. Uh, Karlak, move your ass. Move your ass, Karlak. Goddamn. Hold on. My bad. This is a professional YouTube video, by the way. Um, so we're going to move it. Okay, I can't move it. Well, it'll be right here <laughs> where, 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 where my character is standing. Boom. It'll be just standing up, uh, leaning against this, this, uh, cupboard over here. Okay. In the middle of this chest and these vases. Okay. Bye. The blood of Lethander. So before I show the weapon, I figure I would show the puzzle. Just a little bit of thing on how to, how to get there. So first you got to, before you do anything, before you touch anything in this room, goddamn, save. You want to save like this, press F5. And the reason why is because you got to make an athletics check. And I think the check is really high. I think it's like DC 20 or something. And if you fail on all your characters, then you can't do the puzzle. I'm pretty sure that's... If anyone, if anyone wants to correct me, then go ahead. But I'm pretty sure you can't do the puzzle. And they have to be facing this way and this way. Okay? One's facing this way, one's facing this way. Then it, this little door will open. All right? And you go in here. And then let's go ahead and skip ahead to the, to the rest of the video. First puzzle in here, you're gonna take out this little energy source with your archer or whoever. Bop, bop, okay. Then you're gonna disarm this immediately, or otherwise you get yeeted off of this whole ass cliff and everyone's gonna die. You don't want that. Okay, after you disarm it, you actually gotta go up here. Or one person has to go up here and take out this other energy source over here. Alright, bang. Be careful though, because you got another one over here that you have to disarm immediately. Otherwise, the yeeting will, will, will begin. Okay, and then last one down here, whoever your range character is, or you just throw shit at it if you got some daggers in your inventory or whatever. All right, we're in. So you're going to walk all the way here. And so just so you guys know, you don't have to have the Don Master's Crest to get this item. Did I sell it to the motherfucking vendor? Oh, it's right here. <laughs> My bad. Um, this is a professional YouTube video, by the way. Okay, so... You don't have to have this um, to get this item. It just, it stops the trap mechanism. If you take this item and you don't have the Dime Master's Crest, all you got to do is take out the turrets that spawn. Here, let me just show you. Okay, we put, the dot, we, we put it in and now we have the Blood of the Thander. But the turrets I was talking about is these. If you don't have Dime Master's Crest and you take the weapon, these are going to spawn. Um, they don't have much HP, so they're honestly pretty, pretty, pretty easy to take out. But I, li I like doing whatever the story says, so I, I, I prefer getting the Dime Master's Crest, which is not too hard to get, to be honest. And now, I guess we're going to show the weapon. The Blood of Lethander. Once per long rest, when your hit points are reduced to zero, you regain two to twelve. Allies also regain one to six. So a cheat death plus uh, a AOE heal pretty damn good sheds holy light in a six meter radius in combat fiends and undead standing in the light are blinded unless they succeed a constitution saving throw so yeah this is pretty good if you have a support character if you have a paladin that that is a is a sword and board as well they can get right up in the battlefield and they can get hit as much as they want uh, against undead this is really really strong and of course it comes with light which is super great in act two especially in a certain area that we're going to go over later and of course it's a plus three weapon this is the first plus three weapon that i'm showing in this game this is the earliest one that you can get actually that's not true you can get it in act one by doing a cheesy strap but i didn't show that because i have morals damn it <laughs> but you can get this um it's a plus three but i think the best thing about this weapon is not the cheat death, not the heal, not the light, not the plus three, but the sunbeam. It comes with a sunbeam, a beam of brilliant light that sears and blinds all creatures in its path. And it's a long line, by the way. It's a long line. It does as much damage as fireball. Okay. Um, 
Now, normally Sunbeam is a concentration spell, so that's what makes it a level, if you're wondering why it does low damage for a level 6 spell. Normally, it's a concentration spell, which means you can keep casting it, as, and it doesn't cost a spell slot as long as you're concentrating on it. Um, but the fact, it's, it's still, it's the fact that it comes on a weapon is still pretty crazy. No, it's not a concentration spell anymore, but you can get one cast per long rest, and it doesn't use any spell slots. It just uses its, 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 uh, its use, you know what I'm saying? So, the Blood of the Thunder, very solid. Put this on your sword and board, put this on your support character, put this on your cleric. It'll do you good for pretty much the whole game, okay? Until we get to Act 3, where the crazy stuff begins, but this is really, really solid. The Soul Raker Great Sword, when wielded by a Gith Yankee, this weapon deals an additional 1 to 4 psychic damage, and you gain a plus 2 bonus to initiative rolls. And, before I forget, it also comes with Soul Breaker, a special attack that you can use every short rest. Rend the enemy's body and soul, and possibly stun them. They have to make a constitution saving throw, and it's probably going to be against your spellcasting modifier, or spell DC, whatever that is. Um, and this is a pretty good sword. This will definitely replace, if you're still using the Everburn sword from Act 1, um, this will definitely replace that, okay? And if you are not a Gith Yankee, uh, then I would suggest using a Disguise Self scroll or have someone in your party change you into a Gith Yankee uh, via a spell. I think, oh, actually, actually, I only think Seeming does that. But um, yeah, if you do have Disguise Self on your character, you can change into a Gith Yankee to get these bonuses, which is why Disguise Self uh, is one of the one of the better spells in the game. And it's also a ritual spell, by the way, so it does not cost a spell slot. All right. So yeah, Soul Breaker Grey Sword. This can be found off of Raider Chai Rahag uh, outside of the Inquisitor Room. We just left the Inquisitor Room. Okay, it's over here. We just left. And of course, as soon as you do the whole interaction inside of there, which I'm not going to spoil, these guys attack you. In fact, the whole crash attacks you. Motherfuckers. Uh, and you're going to have to fight all of them, but they drop pretty good items, like this one, all right? Amulet of Branding. Brand the weak. You can expose the weak points of an enemy. They become vulnerable to bludgeoning, slashing, or piercing damage. And it lasts three turns or until it takes damage, and you can use it every long rest. I forgot to show this item when I was at this vendor. This is Ajaknir Jira, uh, like from earlier in the video, but this time we had to kill her ass because, well, it's their fault they attacked me in the first place, so I had to retaliate. Anyway, she has this amulet of branding, which is really good. Uh, if, you just wanna, if you just wanna do damage, you can do da more damage with this. And by the way, when enemies are vulnerable to certain types of damages, they take double that type of damages, okay? Ring of Arcane Synergy. When you deal damage with a cantrip, you gain Arcane Synergy for two turns. Okay, Arcane Synergy, if you didn't uh, see earlier, you, your weapon attacks deal additional damage equal to the affected entity spell casting modifier. Okay, and again, this is one of those things that works really well with uh, with Gishes, okay, with spell blades, you know, weapon attackers slash spell casters. Works really well with them. And this can be found. We're still at the crash. We're at the entrance though, because we are fighting our way out, because these guys just want to attack me all day every day. Uh, this will be found on um, Gish Faraag. And they have the Ring of Arcane Synergy. The Ring of Elemental Infusion. When you deal acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder damage using a spell or cantrip, that element infuses your weapon. Until the end of your turn, you deal an additional 1d4 damage of that element on your first successful weapon attack. Again, this is a nice little hybrid Gish Ranger spellcaster slash weapon attacker type item. And we are here at the infirmary inside the Kresh Yelek. I, I, I love saying that for some reason, I don't know. This is the waypoint, bang. Okay, go outside. The entrance to the right, okay, where we killed those guys. You got to, when, when you enter the Kresh Yelek, you turn left. Boom, that's the egg room over there on the right side. Over here, in the infirmary, we got it off. Who body did we get off of? Youth Durkis? Oh, we got it off of Gish. Gish Umraak. That's the NPC name, okay? The Ring of Elemental Infusion. Quartermaster Tiali, Last Light in Vendor, number one. You probably have run into this chick before because she sells some pretty damn good stuff. Now let me show you what I think the best item that she's selling is. Let's go. All right, so 
Shield of Devotion. You gain one level one spell slots. When a foe hits you with a melee attack, you can use your reaction to knock a prone unless you succeed as a dexterity saving throw. And it comes with aid that I believe you can only cast on yourself. You can only cast on yourself, but it, it's, a, it's a nice extra 10 points, 10 healing points. Okay. This is kind of an upgrade from the uh, Absolute uh, Warboard um, Shield over here that you get from the Absolute back at Act 1. Nice little upgrade for you, and it comes with an extra level 1 spell slot. Also, I should mention, I put this on my Ranger, because Rangers, um, you can use as a stat stick, okay? Obviously, uh, you have your bow, bow in your main hand, or your double hand crossbow. You can use a one-hander and a shield to increase your AC as a bow person, by the way, and it and it works. It normally doesn't do that, like in D&D, &D, but in Baldur's Gate 3, it works like that. So, uh, used, if you got an extra shield slot, this is definitely an upgrade for one of your people that are wearing a shield. Get this item for sure. Okay. Next is the Incandescent Staff. This is a classic. Grants resistance to fire damage. Gets plus one spell attack. Gets a, you could, you, you could use a fire bolt and you could use a fireball on every single long rest, I believe. Uh, yep. Every single long rest for the fireball. And it's just, it's, it's, it's expensive, but if you got the money, it's an extra fireball. Uh, so you definitely want to give this to your, to your fire sorcerer or your fire wizard, you know what I'm saying? Or if you just need some extra little damage in your party and no one's where and has, someone has a extra extra staff slot, go and put this into one of your spellcasters because fireball is one of those spells that is just nice to have. It's if you got a bunch of bunch of low HP enemies, low mid to HP enemies, one fireball could just knock them all out if they all fail fail their save. So incandescent staff, super expensive, but if you got the money. I'd say it's worth. Um, also, while we're here, I just want to point out, Hold Monster is really, really good, by the way, because it works on creatures, not just humanoids, whereas Hold Person works on works on humanoids. Just want to point that out real quick. I saw that. In um, another good item is the Mighty Cloth. So you gain bull strength, bull strength. Based, so th this is kind of like the Graceful Cloth that I showed earlier, but this one is for strength. The bull strength is basically you have advantage on strength um, checks, which is, I think is only the athletics anyway, but um, your strength score is increased by two to a maximum of 20. So you can give this, uh, the, again, we're, we're a little too early in the game uh, for a second ability score increase. So you're probably not at max strength anyway right now. So you can buy this just to get that plus two early and you can hit better, you can hit harder, and it's really, really nice to have. It is a little bit squishy, but you wanna put this on your pure barbarians or pure monks that you're running, you know what I'm saying? Um, where you, Cause you wanna get the unarmored defense or the unarmored movement um, benefits, you can definitely wear this and it's pretty damn good. Uh, and of course, the second thing, you cannot be pushed against your will and have advantage on saving throws against being restrained, which is super solid. And of course, I should probably um, show the bull rush, charge forward and possibly knock your foes back three meters, available only when raging. Um, so obviously this, the, uh, this can this can only work for barbarians because monks can't rage and unless you multi-class, of course. But uh, anything pushing in this game is is nice to have because there's a lot of moments in the game where you gotta push an enemy off of a goddamn you know cliff or something so uh, uh, a high hp enemy can be taken out in one hit if you push him off a cliff and there's a lot of instances in that in this game so mighty cloth plus two to strength bull strength and um advantage on saving throws against being restrained pretty solid item to have okay Next item I want to mention is the Wand T Scale Mail, another classic D&D item. Add your Dexterity modifier to your armor class. Additionally, this armor does not impose disadvantage on stealth ability checks, and it also gives a plus one to your initiative rolls. This is this goes to whoever your Dex user is in your party. This will, uh, assuming they have 18, 20 Dex at this point, they will automatically have 19, 20 AC. Add a shield on top of that. They're over 20 AC and they're really, really hard to hit and they still do a lot of damage. So one T scale mail, very, very good for definitely. This is going to be the second best in slot, I would say, to your dexterity users because the best in slot is in Act 3. But I guess you're going to have to watch the Act 3 video for that one. Okay. <laughs> the next item I want to point out is actually an item that I haven't seen many people use, but the hat of uninhibited Kushigo. After dealing damage with an unarmed attack, the wearer gains plus one bonus to their spell save DC until their end of their turn. Okay, now I don't know if this stacks because as a monk, you make you have flurry of blows, and assuming you have the thief um, subclass, you can you can do flurry of blows twice, which means you hit four times with unarmed attacks. 
okay which means you'll have a plus four bonus to your spell save dc which means if you do a stunning strike after you do your, your unarmed attacks it's probably gonna land and you could stun them i don't know if it stacks you know correct me if i'm wrong but that's but, but i but I, that's what i immediately thought when i saw this hat i'm gonna buy it i do have a monk in my party so i definitely will test that but even if that doesn't exist even if it doesn't stack you will probably it, it, it it's it'll give you a better chance to land your stunning strike against your enemy and stunning strike is one of the monk's best things besides florio blows all right so hat of un, uninhibited kushigo pretty solid and there's one more item I want to show y'all before we get out of here and show the other other vendor the cloak of protection now this may be the the green item of the bunch that I showed you but this might actually be the best item because it's just like the ring of protection the ring of protection is just good on any character okay having a plus one to your armor class and a plus one to your saving throws on one item is just crazy I'm gonna buy this I'm put it, putting it on my melee boy and I'm going crazy because this this can be a best in slot for literally any build out there. You could wear this forever in the game. Combining this with the ring of protection, you, you can turn a squishy character into a character that won't die as much anymore. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that's the last item, the cloak of protection, the quartermaster Tiali. If you don't, or Tali, sorry, I don't, I don't know why I call her Tiali, but anyway. You can find her, you probably know where she is, but here's the last light in waypoint. She is just right next to it, right here, quartermaster Tali. Bang. Great items. Damon, Damon, Damon. Or Damon. Or Damon. Whatever the fuck. Um, hey, the second last light in vendor. Also, the vendor that was in the Emerald Grove in the beginning. This dude. Keep him alive. Keep him alive because he sells some pretty damn good items in Act 1, in Act 2, and in Act 3. But we're in Act 2 right now. Let me show all the good items he has, okay? First. The sword of life stealing on a critical hit the target takes an extra 10 <clears throat> an extra 10 as long as it isn't a construct or undead all right you also gain 10 temporary hit points and the weapon is plus two so this can be used as a, as a stat stick for a ranger by the way so and i'm currently working on a a, a crit build like a pure crit build all right you, you guys have already seen my dual hand crossbow bard build but i'm also i'm working on two other bow builds one with the titan string bow with the strength uh, that's what that's what i'm working on with Carlac over here bang bang she's rocking the titan string bow okay i'm maxing my decks and my strength for that one that one's pretty good um, but I'm also working on another one because there is an item in Act 3 that there is a bow in Act 3 called the Dead Shot that uh, uh, works with crit. So I'm working on another one with that and this item and just stacking crit on top of everything. And uh, it's going to do a lot of freaking damage. So this, I would recommend using this as a stat stick for your rangers because if you crit, that is basically 10 more. It's, it's like double sharpshooter because sharpshooter gives 10. This also gives 10 if you crit. That's 20 damage on top of the other other dice that you're already doing so sort of life stealing pretty solid and it's also pretty good if you're a dual wielder you know what i'm saying so bang uh, another item that's good is the sword master gloves you gain proficiency with short swords long swords and great swords in addition the secondary part is better here you gain a plus one bonus to melee attack rolls having any bonus to your attack rolls especially if you're a great weapon master user these are solid all right so sword master gloves next one i want to show y'all is the dark fire short bow this is honestly this is my go-to stat stick for bows you know if i'm running a melee character or a spellcaster i normally give them the dark fire short bow um because of so many things one it grants resistance to fire damage it's pretty great two it grants re resistance to cold damage it's also pretty great and it also comes with haste <laughs> i mean shit this is a really freaking good uh stat stick okay if you have an open if you have an open bow slot on a spellcaster or a melee person or just want to use this on your bow person, I don't see why not. It comes with so many good things. I'm surprised it's only it's only a blue item. All right. So there's that. The next item I want to show is the Harmonium Halberd. And the only reason why I should want to show this item is it gives plus two strength. Any item that gives plus two to any stat or gives any bonuses to stats are really good in this game in my opinion because it's really hard to come across those kind of items all right there aren't that many things that do that there's the hag hair there's the mirror of loss there's a few items here and there but there aren't that many you know there's some elixirs there's some potions or whatever um but if you're looking for extra strength to do more damage you know to give you a bonus in your attack rolls and you're doing the polearm mastery sentinel build 
that's pretty damn good all right next time on next item i want to show is the charge bound warhammer all right so let's read it this hammer is a magical power oh bro. this weapon has plus one bonus to damage and attack rolls this weapon deals an additional one to six lightning damage and it's a plus one this hammer's magical powers only function if it's bound to an eldritch knight or it's warlocked pack weapon now i'm pretty sure everything you see here in the description gets doubled if you make it bound to an eldritch knight or a packed weapon because when i was using it that's what was happening so if you are an eldritch knight or, or a warlock with packed of the blade this is going to be your best slot until act three straight up this is really freaking strong also it's versatile so you can hold it in one hand and a shield in the other and just be an unkillable damage monster all right charge bound warhammer get it for you gishes out there uh, last thing, last item I want to point out is, where is it? There it is. The safeguard shield, which actually he has in Act 1. I just didn't point it out in Act 1 because uh, uh, I forgot. <laughs> but uh, it, it, the main reason why this is actually a pretty damn good shield is it gives saving throw plus 1. Okay, the only thing it's missing, um, it's like 1 AC off of being as good as a ringer protection or uh, cloak of protection. All right? but it still gives two AC. So it's kind of like another really good defensive item for your characters. So if you're looking for an extra shield, this is really good. Okay, I would say this is even better than the three AC shield because having plus one to all your saving throws is kind of nice, all right? And before we wrap it up with Damon here, there is actually more items I want to show you guys. And these items can be obtained if you have Infernal Irons. You see those Infernal Irons that you'll be finding around the world. You give three of them to Damon, and then he will make you the Hell Dusk items. Uh, let's go over them real quick. The flawed Hell Dusk armor. When you hit, when you are hit by a foe within two meters, it might take one to four fire damage. You take one less piercing damage, and it's just a nice 18 AC heavy armor. And if you got an extra heavy armor person, slap this onto them, and they have some, they have some uh, reflective fire damage. It's not bad. All right. Next is the flawed Hell Dusk helmet. The wielder has plus two bonus to saving throws against spells and plus one to your Constitution saving throws. This is really good. Have, this is basically plus because most most things you're going to be making saving throws against are going to be spells. Okay, so having a plus two, that's that's crazy. That's like that's like another proficiency bonus on top of it. So flawed Hell Dusk helmet. If one of your characters have an open open helmet slot, that you're not using for damage, and you want to use it for defense. Bang, use this. It's solid. And it's a medium armor, so most characters can wear it. Last one, the last, the last Hell Dusk item, and probably the best one in my opinion, because I like I like damage. I like being a glass cannon. The flawed Hell Dusk gloves. Your weapon attacks deal an additional one to four. Your unarmed attacks deal an additional one to four necrotic damage. Alright, and can possibly inflict bleeding. Alright. And bleeding is just some more damage. So it's kind of uh yeah, it's just plus two more damage, plus two slashing damage, okay? Um so I, I know I'm going to equip this on either my monk or my ranger or whoever does weapon or unarmed damage. It's solid. It's really good. Okay. Uh, and those are the uh, items that you can find in Damon. Where can you find Damon? Just in case you don't know, here is the last light waypoint. You're going to go a little north into this little cubby here. And also you want to make sure you make your insight or perception checks here because one of these oxes are kind of strange. All right. So real quick. I don't know why the vendor is not... Okay, there should be a vendor right here. And his name is Mattis. He's a little tiefling boy that is also a vendor in Act 1. I don't know why he's here. If someone in the comments can tell me why he's not here, I'd be, I would appreciate that. But the reason why I want to point that out is because he sells some really damn good boots. No, I can't get them, goddammit. Anyway, they're called evasive boots, and they give plus 1 to AC. Uh, and like plus one to acrobatics, which doesn't matter. It gives plus one to AC though. AC on boots. I think that's the only boots in the game that give AC. So I would like for this NPC to be here. This vendor. Again, someone can tell me why he's not here. I would appreciate that. So I can have those boots. Thank you very much. <laughs> Shifting Corpus Ring. It comes with invisib invisibility. A level two concentration illusion spell, which obviously makes you invis. And Blur, another concentration spell, which uh, uh, enemies have disadvantage on attack rolls against you. Two pretty damn good concentration spells in one ring. And you can get this off of bitch-ass Marcus over here trying to kill our girl uh, Isabel. You kidding me? <laughs> okay, we're at last light in. Uh, also, if you want an easy way to, to, to protect Isabel on any difficulty, all you got to do is cast Feign Death on her. So she, you put her to sleep. Because the AI in this game is not very smart, especially on your team, okay? 
You cast Fang Death on there. You can probably find um, some scrolls of this in vendors for sure. Or if you have a, a spellcaster, they can probably learn it. Okay. And then, so that's your action. Your action is Fang Death. You can do this all in one turn. You want to your you want to use your action on Fang Death on Isabel. Where is she? Right here. When the fight starts. Okay. And for your bonus action, you want to cast Sanctuary. So now she's asleep. Okay. And because she's asleep, um, she can only be only be targeted by AOE spells. And I believe in this fight, none of them have really have any AOE spells except for maybe this guy. But even if he does, it doesn't do that much damage. So she will be asleep. She will be safe from sanctuary, so she can't be she can't be attacked or no spells that target her can be used for her as well. So she'll be safe the whole fight. This same method can be used for every single other NPC that you want to keep alive. For example, Jahira. For example, uh, the Night Song, Dame Island, or whatever the fuck her name is. Any NPC that you know is going to die in the fight because they have small brain, you can keep, you can keep them alive with the Feign Death Sanctuary combo. Alright? Uh, let me show the item again before I... Woohoo! The Snow Burst Ring, easily missable when the wearer deals cold damage. It also creates a 4.5 meter circle of ice around the target. And 4.5 meters is fairly large if it's like, uh, if, especially if it's a, a circle radius. So it literally, it's going to surround their ass with ice, okay? Uh, which enemies can slip on the ice pretty easily. All right. Um, and this obviously is going to go with the cold build. I'm currently working on a cold build right now. I have all the cold, I have almost all the cold items, I should say. Um, and we're working on that currently. But this is definitely a ring I'll be using for that build. And you can find this along with this note that I don't know what it says. Um, last light in. Okay, let's go ahead and show the, the geography of this place. You enter here, boom, keep going past the grill, past the first up here, turn right into this door that most of you probably didn't go into, and it'll actually be in, you gotta make a perception check. So if you missed the perception check of all four characters, too bad. Actually, you could just keep, you could just do hirelings or other NPCs or whatever, but it'll be in this loose plank, boom, snow burst ring. Right there. Filigreed Feywild Feywild Bell. Alright, so you can get this item, first of all. What this item does, let me tell you what it does first. It gives you a blessing. The Pixie Blessing, which basically means the Shadow Curse, which you if you enact to, you should know this. The Shadow Curse cannot affect this creature thanks to a Pixie's protective magic. Yeah, the root of the moon lanterns are pixies, if you didn't know. Alright? And this is the strongest blessing that you can have against the Shadow Curse. And this means, guess what? We don't have to use a Moon Lantern, okay? But to get to get this, this is the only way that I, that I know how to get it. But I'm pretty sure there is another way. Um, but this is the way that I know how. So here's, here's the big Spider-Man. Remember him? If you do decide to kill him and attack him and side with the Harpers, he drops a Moon Lantern, and that Moon Lantern, you should be able to interact with that Moon Lantern. It'll be a pixie trapped inside of there. You're going to release the pixie. You're going to tell it, hey, protect me from the shadow. She'll say, okay. And then um, she'll give you this buff. It's the best buff that you can have against the Shadow Curse. That means no one on your party ha is forced to wear a Moon Lantern, and you're good. All right? Um, and if the buff wears off, for some, for some reason it it, 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 it it comes off of you, just activate the bell again, summon the pixie, do the same thing, and you'll be all good. Alright, so there you go. Thermal Arcanic Gloves. Whenever you deal fire damage, you gain two turns of heat. Now there are builds that build around stuff like this. Heat is basically one of those double-edged sword things. You deal damage to yourself, but you could deal more fire damage with your fire attacks. Okay? Uh, and these can be found in the same spot with the spider. It is part of their convoy. It, and the one who's holding it is Cansif. Uh, ugly ass boy over here. So you're going to pick up these up and make your fire build even stronger. Luminous gloves. When the wearer deals radiant damage, receive one turn of radiating orb. Radiating orb is a debuff that applies negative one to their attack rolls okay and this can stack all right and there are a couple items in the game that do, that do this as well all right and radiating orb is one of the best debuffs in the game in my opinion because you, you can really make you know a, a, a threatening enemy just never land a hit okay so that's why i'm showing these gloves you can find these gloves over here 
in Act 2 at the Ruined Battlefield. Here is the last light in. All right, just go a little south, turn a little left. You got to fight a, a few of these measles, which are pretty easy to, to fight. And make sure, first of all, before you do anything in Act 2, make sure you have this Pixie Blessing, okay? Because you can get real, things, things can get real, uh, real dark for your team. Uh, no pun intended if you don't have the Pixie Blessing. So make sure you get this first, then you can do whatever you want. And just, like, get these gloves, okay? Lantarv, the Bugbear, and Moonrise Towers. Uh, first thing I should mention, uh, you can get three extra soul coins from this guy if you are using Karlak in your party. I am using Karlak in my party, so he, he gives you three extra soul coins, and soul coins do make Karlak stronger. So do make sure you do a little dialogue to, to get those. But also, he sells some pretty decent items. Let me show y'all. Halberd of Vigilance. Halberd, if you're running a Halberd slash Glaive build, Sentinel Polar Master like I was talking about earlier, this is really good. This is really good. Is it as good as the Unseen Menace? It really depends what you're trying to do. Okay, this is more of the damage one. You know, I am a because every attack has advantage. And of course, you get the minus one to crit. But if you're more of a tanky type of Sentinel Pull Master, then this is definitely your go to. Plus one bonus to your initiative rolls and advantage on perception and ability checks. And when you make an attack roll as a reaction, you make it with advantage. And you're going to do, you're going to be making a lot of attack rolls with advantage if you're doing the Sentinel Pull, Pull Iron Master build. Okay? And of course, it's a plus two weapon. All right, this is very solid. If you got, it's expensive. It's expensive, but if you got the money, go ahead and buy this weapon for your for your Sentinel Pole Master person in your party. All right. Next weapon that I want to talk about for this vendor is Gloves of the Duelist. While only holding one weapon in your main hand and nothing in your free hand, get a plus one bonus to melee weapon attack rolls. Um, I'm gonna buy this for my monk. Other classes can use this as well. This is very solid. Getting any bonus to your attack rolls, um, especially when you you don't got the stats or the items. To make sure you can hit every single time or if you don't have advantage on attacks stuff like this is really really good okay so gloves is the duelist bang solid next item I, next item i want to talk about for this vendor is the sentinel shield plus two ac gain a plus three bonus to initiative rolls and advantage on perception ability checks and of course it has the shield bass feature where you can make someone prone as a reaction when they hit you with a melee attack i love this shield it's one of my favorite shields because of the initiative roll, okay? Not every character uses dex, especially if you're a spellcaster, especially if you're, uh, you know, um, a gish, you know, especially if you're a melee person um, with the big two-handed weapon, all right? Not every person uses dex, and dex gives you your initiative rolls. And a lot of the times, sometimes your spellcaster or sometimes your, your sword and board um, is going last in combat, and that's really messing them up. This shield will fix that. Having a plus three bonus to your initiative rolls, you'll either go first like the rest of them or you're going in the middle of the combat, okay? So personally, this is one of my favorite shields just for the initiative bonus, all right? Next item that I want to talk about is the Enraging Heart Garb. While raging, the wearer generates two turns of wrath. Wrath basically gives you extra uh, melee damage. So obviously, you're, you're going to give this to a Raging Barbarian. And of course, if you want to do the the full, the pure Barbarian, where you, where you wear clothing, so you're unarmored and get those unarmored benefits, um, this is this is definitely going to be something you'll be using. If you're not using the Raging Bull, that is, that, that, that I showed you earlier, or the... The Mighty Cloth, whatever the fuck it's called. Um, but also, this gives a plus two to your constitution. And you're probably, you probably don't have a maxed out constitution, okay? Because normally, constitu normally constitution is your secondary stat for most classes. Normally you want to get it up to 16 or 18 and leave it there. But this gives you a plus two, which means a plus one to every, um, I actually don't know the math on that. But it gives you more health, basically, okay? So this is pretty solid for those Raging Barbarian builds. The last item I believe I want to talk about for this guy, yup, is the Fist Breaker Helm. Because it gives a plus one spell save DC. There aren't many items early game that give plus one to spell save DC, but this will definitely go on your spellcaster, especially if they're a fireballer, and they probably are a fireballer, because fireballers are pretty ballin' this, at, at this point in the game, okay? Um, so that's Lantar, the bugbear vendor. You can find him. You probably know where he is, but I'm, just in case you don't, I'm going to show you. Moonrise Tower. There's the waypoint right there. You want to go down. And he's, he's one of the vendors right here. Talk to him. And he also, if you press Alt, he has a shield that uh, you can grab now, but it's a little risky to grab now. But if you plan to do the story later, you can grab it later. And this is a plus 3 AC, AC shield. I think this is the first plus 3 AC shield. 
uh, if I'm not mistaken. But we'll show that later in the video. Robo Moon Glow. This is the second time that you should be running into this vendor. And last time, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong on this, but I haven't run them. I haven't run into them after Act One or uh, or after Act Two. I mean, uh, I didn't find them in Act Three. But if you have, let me know down in the comments. In any case, we're in Act Two. We're still in the same spot. Moonrise Tower vendors. Moonrise Tower. Uh, and they have some pretty decent items. So let me show you some of them. Okay, Gloves of Crushing. The wearer gains plus one bonus to unarmed attack rolls, and their unarmed attacks deal an additional two bludgeoning damage. This is just pretty damn good for monks. I have a monk, I'll be buying these, and I will be using them, all right? Next item I wanna show is the Near Misser. If you're running a dual hand crossbow build, like you should be, because that is currently the best ranger build, or the best bow build, if I'm not mistaken. Um, this is the one to go to and of course it's force damage there are very few things in this game uh, that is resistant to force damage or if you just need help breaking down some walls or breaking down some doors force damage is the best for that uh, and it comes with magic missile which you're probably not going to be using anyway as a ranger but it's here if you want it near misser uh, the next item I want to show y'all is the is this one which I know seems weird so the poisoner's ring let's go click over it virulent venom point your ringed finger at a target to make it vulnerable to poison damage now personally i don't know of any good poison builds in this game but i'm sure someone does and this ring is probably going to be best in slot so that's why i wanted to include it in this video if you know of a poison build you're probably using this ring and if you know of a poison build let me know down in the comments because a uh, poison build does sound kind of interesting okay and the last item I want to show you all for this vendor is the Marksmanship Hat. You gain a plus one bonus to attack roll and thrown attack rolls. I currently use this for my Throw Barbarian build. It's very solid. It gives you a better chance to hit. And it's definitely a nice placeholder for items that you will eventually get in Act 3. So that is Roman Moon Glow, the Act 2 Moonrise vendors, one of them. Who are they? It is literally right next to the vendor that I just showed you guys, Lantarv, Roa Glow, Punchy Boy, that's my name. Um, but she is right here. And again, make sure you don't kill these vendors because sometimes they might pop up in later racks, all right? Araj Oblodra. Sorry if I said that wrong. Um, this is the last vendor in Moonrise Towers. Yes, there are three vendors. I also thought there were only two, but there are, there are in fact three. This is the third one. And she has a few items too that are pretty damn good. Let's go over them. Risky ring. You have you gain advantage on attack rolls and receive disadvantage on saving throws. So this I like to put on my sharpshooters. I like to put this on my sharpshooters. Sharpshooter is a feat. Is a feat. You guys probably know what it does. Minus five to your attack roll, plus ten of damage. This is my go-to on them because. Um, I'm okay with them having disadvantage on saving throws because they're rangers. Rangers attack from afar and for their spellcaster to reach the ranger, they normally have to go through your tank first. You know, if you're playing correctly as a ranger, you shouldn't be close enough to be getting hit with spells. You know what I'm saying? So I like the risky ring. I put them on sharpshooters. I wouldn't put them on melee people though. You know, if you're looking for advantage to get, to get with melee, then I would use the unseen menace. Which, as you can tell, I have a, I have a certain love for this item because it's really, really good, okay? But if you're a ranger and you're using sharpshooter, I would recommend using the risky ring. It's just so valuable. Having an advantage on one thing so you can focus on damage on all the other all your other pieces of gear is pretty damn good, okay? Risky ring. Next one is the ring of free action. You, you ignore the effects of difficult terrain and cannot be paralyzed or restrained. This ring is just a good-ass ring. It's really good, especially if you're melee and, ha and, ha and are having trouble or have to walk over your team's spike growths and whatnot. This ring is always good. You can use this ring until someone in your party learns that fourth level spell, Freedom of Movement, so they can cast it on everyone, right? You can use this ring until then, and uh, this is just a solid-ass ring to have this at this, this point in the game, you know what I'm saying? Next item that we're going to talk about is the Robe of Exquisite Focus. You gain a plus one bonus to spell save DC. Again, spell save DC items are hard to come across uh, at this point in the game. Most of them are actually in Act 3. Um, so pick this up. If you got a spellcaster, this is probably going to be their best in slot until Act 3. All right. And the last item, or the second to last item, I should say, that we're going over is the Graceful uh, cloth gain plus one bonus to unarmed attack rolls and damage of throwing attacks. Okay, if 
If you're someone like me and uh, you already have max strength, you can throw away the mighty cloth and put this one instead uh, to, to, to your monk or your throw barian. You know what I'm saying? And of course, it gives plus one to AC. This is just, this is just a good, good item to know of just in case you already have the stats figured out. You know what I'm saying? So graceful cloth, plus one bonus to unarmed attacks and damage of throwing attacks. All right. It's decent. And the last thing that I, that I want to show is the hat of storm science power when the weird when the wearer deals thunder damage they gain arcane arcane acuity which gives plus one bonus spell attack rolls and spell divinity class per turn remaining so i uh i like i'm trying to make an elemental spellcaster for each element it's kind of hard because i mean there there are really only two ones that stand out that's the fire one and that's the ice lightning one because those you know those work out um, but working working on a cold one working on a thunder one it's kind of hard because there aren't there aren't that good but they still work out you know what i mean but if you are a thunder damage only build this is definitely your go-to this is definitely your go-to there's, there's also a fire version of this hat uh which i'm um i'm trying to figure out where to get that one um but I've, uh, i'm pretty sure i'm close so there's that and i do want to point out she has if you have a star on in your party if you if you've kept them alive I did not because I totally forgot you can get a plus two permanent strength potion if you let Astarion bite this bitch's neck yes I didn't stutter I didn't I didn't exaggerate that is exactly how you get a plus two permanent strength potion my dumbass forgot that you know um so I let I let I let the gers take Astarion but uh i would recommend keeping him at least until up until the, up until the, up, until, up until this point let his horny ass bite this girl bite this drow in the neck and you get a permanent plus two strength potion po potion potion give that to your monk that's using tavern brawler give that to your throw barbarian that's using tavern brawler or just give that to your strength either you know what i'm saying uh and that's about it for this vendor she can be found Again, we're still in Moonrise Towers. Here's the entrance. Here's the first two vendors that I showed you. You're just gonna go a little bit down here, down to the bottom right, and she'll be in this room whipping up some potions. The Cold Brim Hat, once per turn, any condition inflicted on a target also applies two turns of Encrusted with Frost. Encrusted with Frost, uh, the entity, the affected person had had disadvantage on the dexterity saving throws, which is probably most of your damage spells if you're a spellcaster. And when there are seven or more turns remaining, the entity must must succeed on a Constitution saving throw or take a one to four cold damage and become frozen. Uh, on a successful save, it only takes half damage. Afterward, the frost slows away, removed by burning and frozen. Uh, the affected entity is utterly enameled in ice and is incapacitated if it is dealt bludgeoning, thunder, or force damage. The ice shatters any of the condition, and when something is incapacitated, they're pretty much stunned. I don't think they're automatically crit in this condition. Correct me if I'm wrong, but if you are running a an ice build, there you go. And I, again, like I told you, I'm working on elemental uh, on a elemental spellcaster build for each um, element. And for the cold build, I'm definitely going to be using this. This can be found in Baltazar's room. This can be found. We are inside the Moonrise Towers. We just had the interaction with Kethric and Zrel. We are currently in Baltazar's room. To get inside here, you're going to see a bookcase. Make some perception checks uh, and click the top right protruding book. And inside this little thing is going to open up. You're going to put in here a heart, which you can get off of one of these, one of these uh, bodies in here. Put the heart in there. It'll open up the secret room where I'm pretty sure you can make your own working lantern or not. I'm not entirely sure, but in any case, it has the uh, cold helm, which is in this little chest over here. Ah, yes, the coruscation ring. When the wearer deals spell damage while illuminated by a light source, they also inflict radiating orb upon the target. Radiating orb, like I mentioned before, is one of the best debuffs in the game. You can have an enemy have like negative 10 attack rolls. They will never hit you in their lives okay um and a very easy way to activate this is just use the cantrip light use the cantrip light on yourself or whoever is using this ring and they will always inflict this condition on the target all right and this ring goes in tandem with one of the rings i'm going to show later that you're already probably aware of but if you're not i'm gonna wait for that ring later in the video this can be found before i forget my bad so we are currently underneath 
uh, last light in just look around uh, for a, for a, for an underground door that goes downwards or look there's like two ways to get down here okay so just just explore last light in to get underground and when you do it when you are underground it is over here in this spot the coruscation ring it's pretty damn good the ring of self-immolation self-immolation basically you set yourself on fire to gain heat now if you're going to do a heat build i suggest you use the heat convergence as soon as you have it because um if you're you're probably going to be a spellcaster if you're using a heat build and if you're a spellcaster you're probably concentrating on spells like haste and if you damage yourself and lose concentration especially on a spell like haste if you lose concentration on haste you you like get stunned for one turn it's kind of terrible so if you're going to use a heat build make sure you just use the heat convergence immediately it's just just and heat convergence is just a little bit of extra damage that's all it is all right you can find this over here in the ruined battlefield here's the last light in uh thing you know what i mean um here's the last light in bottom right and then you um go over here you're gonna have to fight a bunch of these things on the ground um if you don't make a perception check you might get surprised but you can see them in the bushes anyway this is um not a this is not what this is definitely one of the tougher fights in this act um especially if this is your first playthrough so kind of a tough fight but you're rewarded with this pretty sweet heat ring ring of shadows pass without trace plus 10 to your stealth checks until a long rest and last the whole damn day okay this is i mean this is just really good the pass without trace it gives it to all your companions so even if your companions have disadvantage on their stealth checks spell just in case someone in your, in your team doesn't have it you'll be able to pass stealth checks pretty much okay and of course this will make your stealthy character even more stealthy so they can make all their stealth checks they would literally have to roll a one for you to not be stealthy all right and this can be found over here this is the over here in the uh, shadow battlefield we're still in the ruined battlefield here is the waypoint shadow battlefield go a little northeast talk to this little kid do some little hide and seek do a little dialogue defeat some ghouls and he will give you this ring as a reward a ring of shadows in the same little house as that ring i just showed you with past without trace you could find this ring as well in this chest just near the kid uh, it is called the ring of mental inhibition when a foe fails a saving throw against one of your spells or action they get they gain mental fatigue and mental fatigue gives them a minus one penalty to wisdom intelligence and charisma saving throws for every turn remaining so that means they get stack and there are a lot of spells like hold person or hold monster those are wisdom saving throws mind blast one of your illithid powers that's an intelligence saving throw and stuff like banishment or bane or charisma saving throws um so this is a very good ring you could put it on your control slash support character a build i'm working on currently and i'll soon re release on this channel um definitely a go-to ring and again you're probably uh, at this point in the game you're trying to fill up your ring slots and your cloak slots and your and your amulet slots and put this uh if you have more than one spellcaster in your party you definitely want to put this on one of them the hat of fire acuity and the shapeshifter's boon ring these two items are pretty damn good one is good for combat one is good for out of combat okay the hat of fire acuity when you deal fire damage you gain arcane acuity and arcane acuity basically gives you plus one to your spell attack rolls and your plus one spell difficulty class so if you're a fireballer a wall of fire -er, if you're a person using fire this is your go-to helmet at least until act three it's very very good and the ring the ring you can use this ring to you know to boost your lock picks to boost your pickpockets to boost anything a 1d4 bonus to all checks as long as you're using disguise self on yourself okay very good ring if you want to make uh outside of combat checks and you can find both of these items at the quote-unquote strange ox here at the last light inn okay yeah so here's here's damon's little shack right here there's a little ox which actually you interact with this ox earlier in act one and i would suggest not killing it until now when it reveals itself as a little glob glob okay and this little glob glob has some pretty good items like i said the hat of fire acuity and the shapeshifter's boon ring enjoy the punch a drunk bastard a great club while you are drunk 
you have advantage on all attack rolls and you also create a blast with each attack dealing one to four thunder damage in like a three meter radius plus one weapon when you miss an attack you deal five damage anyway this sounds pretty crazy okay now i don't know of any drunk builds i haven't seen any on youtube but i feel like i would be doing this video a disservice if i didn't include this item in the act two best items thing someone out there has a has a drunk build if they do send them to me because i definitely want to play a build like this okay um i mean look it it sounds crazy on paper you know but i mean we'll see anyway you can find this uh plus a recipe to one of the better coats in the game uh so here's the moonrise towers here's the waning moon you're gonna have a drinking battle against one of the thorns all right he, he he'll drop a key you can have a drinking battle or you can fight him either one they have like the same amount of xp um i normally like, like to talk my way out of uh, out of a fight just because that's like the quicker more fun way you know what i'm saying um but you go behind him a secret door a secret lab back here you can pick up some stuff and in this wooden chest over here you can find the punch drunk bastard Gloves of Battle Mage's power. When a weapon attack roll inflicts a condition, the wielder gains Arcane Acuity. And Arcane Acuity gives you plus one spell attack rolls and spell DC per turn remaining. So again, it's a, another thing that can stack on top of itself. And so this is for your Gishes. Obviously, this is for your uh, weapon attackers slash spell casters. Um, this is just really good. You know, I feel like I've shown quite a few of those kind of items so far in this video so uh if you haven't thought about making one of those characters i suggest you do so because the, the the larion studios in baldur's gate 3 has given you quite a few good freaking options to make a gishy all right you can find these at the toll house up top okay this is where you find the uh buddha over here gold fat all right go in this room it's gonna be locked go this chest is gonna be locked lock pick lock pick you get the gloves the crack near bracers you can cast mage hand as a bonus action and it comes with telekinesis which you can use every long rest i believe every short rest god damn that's pretty good um and it's a concentration spell so you can keep casting telekinesis um it, while you're concentrating on it pretty good gloves you know um you can put this on one of your spellcasters one of your support characters you know normally support characters just kind of bless and afk and heal during fights so you can put this on them to give them that little little extra telekinesis you know what i'm saying and uh, just a cool little uh, nice gloves to have this is uh so this is the baldur's road to baldur's gateway point we start in act two Northwest of Waiting Moon, Northwest of Moonrise Towers, and you'll find some Gith Yankees here trying to gank you. Just pick them up off the main guy, Chirai Tsaka'an. Bang. The Eversight Ring, Blind Immunity. The wearer cannot be blinded, um, which basically means they... The reason why I'm showing this ring, this is kind of similar to Devil's Sight, okay? Which is a Warlock-only thing. This ring basically means you can cast darkness, you can cast fog cloud, um, and be able to see t perfectly fine <laughs> because those effects blind characters. All right. Um, but this ring negates that. Okay. So if you want to have a pseudo devil sight and you're not a warlock, you want to be able to fight in darkness because, and honestly, darkness, uh, it's one of those spells that kind of breaks the game. It trivializes the game because if the NPC, the AI is very stupid. And sometimes the AI does not know how to handle heavily obscured areas. To them, they're truly blind, okay? Um, so you can combine that with this ring or the Warlock Devil Sight and be pretty much untouchable. You know, I did a whole ass playthrough using the warlock devil sight darkness combo and i was able to beat the game very easily using only one character with that build so that just goes uh, just just goes to show how powerful it is and um yeah eversight ring i should probably show where, I, where i'm at we are in um the house of healing 
we are in the morgue. It is just nearby. Just look around. I believe it's on the left side. Okay, you can enter it through the left side. It's kind of underground as well. All right, you got to get through some traps in this room. It's full of poison. You got to disarm, disarm these vents so you can, um, uh, you know, have, have the vents suck out the poison from the room. You get in here and it is in this chest, the Eversight Ring. The Flesh Melter Cloak, whenever a creature deals melee damage to the wearer, that creature takes 1 to 4 acid damage. Now, as I'm doing my 6th playthrough, I'm actually finding quite a few items that uh, do reflect damage. Kind of like a Thorns, uh, thorns build. So I'm wondering if you can do that. Because I know there is a wizard build running around there that um, you're super tanky. And you basically kill them off of armor, of armor of Agathis and Fire Shield. So I'm wondering if you can combine those with items like this so they can take even more damage. So that's why I'm just showing you guys this one. Even though this may not be a super duper good item. Um, an item like this could be low key build enabling. Uh, like a thorns build and also not everyone in your, in your party can wear uh, the cloak of protection So if you got an open cloak slot, just want to slap this on the lightning jabber this is a good throwing weapon Okay, it does Piercing damage lightning damage and when launched at a target deal an additional all right if thrown um, Now unfortunately it does not have the homing passive where it does not return to you but if you are playing a throwing build that is an eldritch knight or a pact of the blade warlock that means this weapon will always return back to you and uh, at this point in the game this is probably your best throwing weapon you know what i'm saying um like pure throwing weapon and you can get this over here uh the the mausoleum is right in this area okay let me just show you where i am as a whole the moon rises over there we're all the way over here Okay, how did I get here? Honestly, I went here to the morgue, a house of healing, and then I exited through here. I don't know how the fuck, but I'm, I need to get back there. But yeah, you can find it over here. I uh, gotta kill all these cool toas, one of them. Um, the chief is gonna have it. Bang, lightning jabber. True Love's Embrace. This is one of the uh, warding bond rings, and you can find it over here. Um, where are we at? We're in the house of healing on the left hand side between these two beds. There's a little skeleton down here. Rest in peace. I don't know your name, but you got a really good ring. Okay, here's the first one, and I'm about to show y'all where, where the second one is. It's not too far from here. All right, real quick, y'all. I want to show y'all my favorite coat in the game, and probably yours too. You've probably seen this coat around. I think it's the best one. Okay, um, and it's this it's Carbass Sans Poison. There's not too many of these running around. I don't think there's a recipe for it. You know, I haven't found a recipe for it. I think you can get like one more at the doctor's office or some shit, but I like this coat a lot. Not because of the poison, but because of the paralyze. The paralyze, paralyze is really strong in this game, or just in D&D in general. If something is paralyzed, that means all attacks on them, if you're like close enough, is an automatic crit okay so if you pre coat your weapon coats last for 10 turns by the way if you pre coat your weapon before a fight that means every single attack that you try to hit might paralyze their ass and if you're playing one of those characters that attacks a lot per turn like a lot of builds are then this will this will go crazy you're gonna be paralyzing the whole damn field so this is my favorite coat i just i want to show y'all where to get it one of the best or where to get it in bulk rather okay you can find it sister lidwin she is a, a vendor here at the house of healing all right she's on this side you gotta do a little dialogue with her you gotta convince her that these two are actually dead and then she'll start selling you stuff all right um and again i'm gonna show you all what it is carabas sans poison bang and you can also get an item called carabas sans gift um which does the same shit, but i believe is a throwing throwing version so that's strong as well any type of paralyze is super good you know especially if you ain't got to be concentrating it like hold hold person or hold monster if it just does it and you're, you're not concentrating on it that's pretty crazy right so carabas on this poison sister lidwin at the house of healing go hit it up true love's caress the other part of the warding bond ring this can be combined with true love's embrace and basically you can uh, make a character 
I have warding bond. Okay. Only one character. All right. And they gain resistance to all damage, plus one to their AC, plus one to their saving throws. And whenever they take damage, you share, you, you take that damage as well. All right. Um, so careful using this. All right. You probably want to link this with your cleric and your tank. That's a, that's a normal thing. Okay. Or just one of your tanks and one of your squishies. All right. Um, but warding bond is very, very good. It's a very good defensive thing, and you probably want to cast it on at least uh, on at least one of your characters, because having a resistance plus one AC plus one saving throws is crazy. All right, it's just a better version of Ring of Protection, which is, you can see on the right side. You know what I'm saying? So this can be found over here, not too far from the from the House of Healing. House of Healing is right here. We found the first ring on this side of the house. We go a little a little, little bit to, to 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 the right side, go up a little bit. You'll see a bunch of tombstones. You know what I'm saying? And it'll be over here. In fact, if you make a, if you make a perception check, it'll point it out for you. And it'll be on this skeleton over here. It'll have True Love's Caress. So there are two items I want to show y'all from our boy Malice Storm here, the mad scientist doctor guy. First is the Surgeon Subjugation Amulet. Once per long rest when scoring a crit on a humanoid, the wearer can paralyze the target for two turns. This is really strong in combo with the Illith to power Luck of the Four Realms. When you make a successful attack roll against the foe, you can change that into a critical hit. So if you can change one of your attacks uh, into a critical hit every long rest, that means you're guaranteed to paralyze at least one thing every long rest with well, it have, they gotta be a humanoid, and there's there's a few humanoids in this game, right? Not really any important ones that I can recall, um, but in any case, this is very strong, and if you're running a crit character, this is probably gonna be their best slot, you know what I'm saying? And the second item I wanna show you is the battered loot. This is this loot, if you're wondering what this loot is for, you take this loot back to the guy at Last Light Inn, you play it, he wakes up, you can then, and then you can do the quest where it involves housing and saving the land from the shadow curse and you could lift it you know what i'm saying just in case you're wondering about that this this is used for that quest okay and of course you can find this in the back room at the back, at the back of the house of healing all right back here and uh i suggest having a character with high charisma when you do this interaction because you can convince uh everyone to kill themselves pretty much i convinced the sisters to just kill him Right, but I think if you convince everyone to kill themselves, you get a little bit more XP. I could be wrong on that, but in any case, there it is. Crit, crit amulet and the battered loot for the quest. Helmet of Arcane Acuity. When you deal damage with a weapon attack, you gain Arcane Acuity. Arcane Acuity, you get plus one to your spell attack and spell DCs. Um, and this is just a really good helmet. A really good helmet, again, for those builds that cast spells and hit with weapons, with, through bows, or through melee attacks. This is just one of those items that's really good on them. Really good for Gishes. You know what I'm saying? And you can get this over here. Where the fuck am I? <laughs> uh, oh yeah, I am at the, so the Mason's Guild, right, in Act 2. It is under the hatch. You can get here. It's in this chest. It is, uh, you have to disarm a trap with a pretty high DC of 21. You also got to fight a few uh, ghouls here that are, that are pretty weak. Um, but yeah, the DC is 21 for the for, for the disarm. Um, but the unlock is only like 14. And there you go, you have the Helmet of Arcane Acuity. Shield of Scorching Reprisal. Plus 2 AC shield. When a foe hits you with a melee attack, shield bash, knock him prone, whatever, whatever. And it also grants resistance to fire damage, but the effect blazer retaliation huddle behind your shield to increase your ac by one and then when an attacker misses you with a melee attack they take one to six fire damage this also only costs a bonus action um so i'm including this shield in the video because one it's very easily missable okay i, I only found this in like two out of six of my playthroughs and it's basically a three ac shield three ac shields there's like only one or two of them in Act 2. Okay, there aren't too many too many of them um, lying around. You do have to waste a bonus action to get that AC to 3 on the shield, but it also comes with Shield Bash. So this is actually one of the better shields that you can get in Act 2. Alright, and you can get this over here. Okay, so this is Last Light. Alright, it's actually nearby if you're following up with the House in Quest. It's nearby. How The House in Quest is over here where you gotta defend the portal. Okay, so you're gonna go to the Last Light. Go north. Go east, and it's right up here. You're gonna have to make a perception check. There's gonna be like a, a pile of, there's gonna be a pile of rocks. You gotta make a perception check, 
click on the rocks, they disperse, then this, this body comes up, and you can get this really, really good shield. The Potent Robe. Your cantrip deals additional damage equal to your charisma modifier. At the beginning of the wearer's turn, the robe activates, granting them temporary hit points equal to their charisma modifier. Um, this is the best in slot for any Eldritch Blast builds out there because this stacks on top of Agonizing Blast. Okay, so if you got 20 charisma, you'll get plus 5 from Agonizing Blast, you'll get plus 5 from this robe, and this is the absolute best in slot for any Eldritch Blaster out there. Okay, this robe slaps, but it's kind of, it's not difficult to get, but it's like kind of weird to get, okay? So... Here's a bunch of stuff. Who gave this to me? Her name is Alfira. Um, you want to keep Alfira alive, all right? And if you're if you're normally playing throughout the game, you can find her. I uh, if you guys watched my um, Act One items video or whatever the fuck, you can find her uh, near the Emerald Grove. Okay, she's to the east. She's on like a little hill. She's playing her little loot. All right. Make sure you interact with her at least once. You know what I'm saying? So she exists in your code, in your playthrough, all right? <laughs> but more importantly, if you're playing Dark Urge, you want to save. When you're about to finish Act 1 and head into Act 2, you want to save a few times before you take some long rests. Because in one of those long rests, she is going to go in your camp. And if you're playing the Dark Urge campaign, the Dark Urge murders her. Okay, it just does it, all right? So if you... You can keep her alive though, and I'm gonna tell you how. The reason why you wanna save, because you're gonna go to where she's playing her little lute, singing her little songs near the Emerald Grove. You're going to go to your passives and you're going to toggle this. And you're gonna knock her ass out <laughs> while she's playing her instrument. Then you take that long rest and someone else is gonna show up for the Dark Urge to kill. And then you don't have to worry about her dying. She will be alive as long as you keep her alive throughout the playthrough. And you want to keep her alive because she gives this super duper sweet po uh, robe that is by far the best in slot for any Eldritch Blast builds. Okay? Oh, and I guess I should mention the quest. So the quest that you do is, so there's a prison. There's a prison. Um, Moonrise Towers. You can get there by uh, going in th through the south entrance. Or you can get there by, there's another stairway that leads down to the prison. Okay? Um, and basically you're going to break out the tieflings, uh, and, or you can choose to break out the deep gnomes that are also there. Okay. If you break out the tieflings, you bring them back here to, to, to last light in and you get the robe. And if you break out the iron, the, the, the deep gnomes, that's like a, a, a quest for later in the game. You can break out both by the way, if you time it correctly. And you could do all this by just breaking the walls behind the prisons. You don't have to fight the warden or anything. I mean, you're going to probably fight them eventually, right? Um, but you could just break the walls behind the prison doors and then break them out pretty easily. There's going to be a boat. Explain, uh, you're going to escape to the boat with the deep gnomes and the tieflings. And you're going to arrive at last land in. Okay. Very good. I'm going to show it again. Potent robe. Yeah. <clears throat> the covert cowl. While obscured, the number you need to roll a critical hit while attacking is reduced by one. This effect can stack. I forgot to show this earlier. This can be found in the same place as the Coruscation Ring, which is underground last light in. Okay, you're going to go to that underground place that I showed you earlier for that for that radiation orb ring. Okay, and um, there is a there is a medium armor version of this, which I'm going to show later in the video, but I, I forgot to mention this one. So just in case you're running one of those pure rogues or warlock or rogue slash warlock build, which is the build that I'm working on, by the way. You can find this over here at, at Last Light Inn, underground, in the same place that you find the Coruscation Ring, which uh, which is this. All right. Callous Glow Ring, and the wearer deals an additional two points of damage against creatures that are illuminated. Okay, and this pairs really really well with the coruscation ring okay the when the wear deals spell damage while illuminated so the combo is you cast light on your weapon which which illuminates yourself you you, you have one of your spell casters wear this ring and they wear this other ring over here okay the callus ring 
and now they'll be just doing extra damage with their spells and this is especially good with the eldritch blast combo just in case you guys haven't watched that video i recommend watching it the combo of these is normally your go-to when you're a spellcaster you just do uh, extra damage and you apply a really strong debuff on enemies it's like for me whenever i have a spellcaster in, in the group especially an eldritch blaster like i said i n will normally give them these rings and they are good to go for the rest of the game okay and you can get this ring over here so balthazar we're here in the gauntlet of shar okay balthazar is right here and uh to the right of his room all right when you enter balthazar's room all right Boom, boom. His room's over here. You talk to him a little bit. To the right is a vault. The DC is 30 to lockpick it. But for me, I just I just, I just, just use knock when it comes to high DC things, just so I don't waste the resources. Uh, and you, you can get this ring in this right chest over here. It'll be inside. Right there. Okay. Callus Glow Ring. The Hellfire Hand Crossbow. Possibly inflict burning when hitting a creature with this weapon while hiding or invisible. And also comes with a level three scorching ray and it is a plus two weapon this is your best in slot if you are a dual hand crossbow player okay this along with near misser um is your best in slot for dual hand crossbow builds okay these are just the best ones that you can get all right and you can get this if you don't know we are still on the gauntlet of scar uh, of char and the, this Jurger guy, the one that Raphael tasked you to kill just outside of the mauso mausoleum. Okay, this is the guy. And uh, a little bit of extra a little bit of extra tip here, if you have a bard in your party, uh, you can actually do, uh, it unlocks a dialogue to where you can have Jurger kill off everything for you, including the Displacer Beast, and kill off himself. So you don't have to do the fight at all. You do mess out on a lot of XP. Um, but if you want to save like an hour of your time, you could just have it, have Yuger just kill everyone for yourself, okay? And then you can loot this off of his dead body. Hellfire hand crossbow, super good for those dual hand crossbow builds. Dark Justiciar, Justic, just 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 whatever. Gauntlets, uh, your weapon attacks deal an additional one to four necrotic damage. Um, I pointed out this weapon because, or th these gloves because they're, 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 it's just extra damage on top of your stuff. And you've already have someone in your party already wearing the, f the hell dust gloves. They are, these are an extra pair and, uh, they are nice to have. Okay. And you could find these. We are still in the Jurger room. Okay. Um, so this is Jurger up top. You're going to go down and around in this little supply space. And these gloves are going to be on top of these boxes over here. Make sure you want to press alt and you can loot the dark justice to art. D d d d gloves <laughs> boots of brilliance one of my favorite items restore bardic inspiration it is an action and you can uh restore one of your bardic inspiration slots okay uh this this is obviously good for bards uh but i'd recommend using it actually on uh for dual hand crossbow build okay if you haven't seen my dual hand crossbow bard video i suggest checking it out it's one of the best bow damage builds in the game okay and the problem with that build is you run out of bardic inspiration pretty fast during a fight and there are there are only so many ways to restore it during a fight this is one of them okay you, if you restore one of these that is an extra slashing flourish that you could do and slashing flourish as a dual hand crossbow build does a lot of freaking damage okay and you could find these we're still in the gauntlet of shar we are still nearby the yurger room okay this is this is where you find yurger get the hell hand crossbow and the ju the justice gauntlets and go over here all right and it'll be in this huge chest the boots of brilliance the spear of night the spear used to kill or not kill the night song the dark justice cr i said it right half plate and the dark the cr helmet these three items pretty dang good but before i show you guys what the items do let me show you how to get in here so we're still on the gauntlet of char we are in the library all right which is underneath the soft step trial okay you're gonna open this you're gonna open this gate here it's gonna be a gate here it's gonna be closed you're gonna press this button to open this gate right here okay and you're also gonna make a perception check on this these this rows of books okay you're gonna disarm the trap and you're gonna loot the book that's in here and the book that's in there is the teaching of loss the night singer and that is the book you need to unlock this secret part of this library, all right? You need to get the teaching of Lost and Night Singer, which is in that bookshelf that I just showed you. You put that in there, um, and it'll open this back door, and you're going to find the Spear of Night. Let's go and look at the items real quick. 
Okay, the Spirit Knights. And the stats are, are, pr are pretty meh, uh, but this is this is mainly for the whole Night Song quest thing. Okay, so you want to grab this so you can have little old Shadow Lart decide if she wants to um, kill the Night Song or not. You know, how, depending on how your campaign has been going. Okay, and of course, you could also find the Dr. Sissiar Half Plate. And this, uh, while obscured, the wearer has advantage on stealth checks, advantage on constitution saving throw checks, which are spells, by the way, and it comes with Shares Aegis, which increases. Um, your armor class by two and it lasts until a long rest but it is a concentration spell okay um this is pretty decent but the more uh the most important item that i want to show here behind the library is the helmet the wielder has plus one bonus to saving throws against spell solid and while obscured the number you need to roll a critical hit while attacking is reduced by one this effect can stack so this is more is more of an upgraded version of the covert cow that i showed you okay but the difference here is the covert cow is light armor and this is is medium armor okay so unless you're a ranger unless you started ranger your your, your thief probably won't be able to wear this so i would just stick with the covert cow but just in case you're a ranger and you're playing the crit ranger like you should be because the crit ranger is kind of crazy uh this would be uh your helm for quite a while until act three where you, it gets replaced by another helm that we're gonna sh uh, i will show in the act three video all right so again behind the library there's pretty good items back here get the book put it in there teaching of lost a night singer bang it opens up this back door and you can look at the, you can loot these uh pretty sweet items Circle of Bones, allied undead within six meters are resistant to bludgeoning, slashing, and piercing damage, basically all physical damage, and it also comes with anime dead, which uh, create an undead server from a corpse. Okay, so this this is, um, this time it's obviously really good for those summoning necromancer builds. If you use a bunch of zombies or skeletons or whatever, this is definitely going to be pretty damn good for your build, and it can be found off of Balthazar's bitch ass. Okay, you can, you can murder him. Um, also, you can you can you can definitely kill him before he summons all his little skeletons. Okay, you do miss out on a lot of XP, but you can kill him before he summons anything. It's pretty easy. All right, just make sure you have enough damage. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna go deal with the night song, watch the cool ass cutscene, and then I'm gonna show you the next item. But this one, Circle of Bones, replenish an expended spell slot of any level, and it's a bonus action. And this is really good. Especially at the, you know, once you get your fourth level spells, fifth level spells, sixth level spells, you only have so many spell slots to use those spells. Something like this is going to replenish it out of combat, in combat, very nicely, okay? Uh, this can be found at Moonrise Towers, okay? After you do the whole fight, if you choose to go that way, or if not, you can just get it at the Warden, who is in the Moonrise Towers prison initially. You can just beat him up over there, or you can beat him up over here, wherever, but just make sure when you beat up the Warden, you loot it. The Iron Banded Shield, plus one. It is probably the earliest plus three shield that you can get, other than the Scorching shield that I showed you earlier, but for this one you don't have to use a bonus action for it to be plus three It's gonna be over here just behind the land tarver vendor that I showed you earlier in the video as well It's just behind him. Okay, you have to press alt to see it Loot it bang plus three shield baby and uh, Yeah, y'all know where this is at moonrise tower vendor after the fight before the fight however which way you want to get it plus three shield the Merculite scourge the reason why I'm showing this weapon is because, in my opinion, and some others, it's one of the best dual wielding weapons because it actually comes with extra damage. 1d8 plus your strength modifier, whatever, um, but it also comes with 1d6 necrotic. So a little bit of extra damage on top, and of course if you miss, you deal 5 damage anyway. You dual wield these, and you can go kind of crazy. You know, I got a build that I'm working on with these, um, you know, uh, and it'll be a strength build, obviously. And I want to see, you know, just how, just how beefy it could be. And I think it's, uh, it's really, really good. You know, again, any item with extra damage on top of it, if you, if you keep stacking uh, uh, items with, with extra damage, it, it adds up. The dice rolls add up. The 1d4s, the 1d6s, it may seem small at first, but the more you add up... The crazier a build can get so for me this is definitely a, uh, an item that i feel like was worthy to put in the video Merkulite light scourge where you can get this you can be able to find two of these at least at the at the moonrise towers i found one off of radija and i think i found one off of uh, one of the other ones downstairs um uh, but yeah for sure do wielding these does sound pretty crazy and i definitely will will be releasing a build um 
that does exactly that. All right. The Cloak of Elemental Absorption. It comes with Absorb Elements, a classic D&D spell. Absorb elemental damage once per short rest. Take half damage from the next elemental attack targeting you and deal an additional 1d6 of that element type back to your next attack. So if you get targeted by, by a big-ass fireball, you can half that damage. And if you make the save, you half it even more, only taking a quarter of that damage, okay? And then, not only that, you can add that 1d6 to your next attack if you are an attack type of build, okay? And because you can use it every short rest, you can, you're, you're, you're going to use be using this effect pretty damn often, okay? One of the... Um, one of, one of my favorite cloaks. It's just very good. It's very solid to have on anyone, pretty much. You know what I'm saying? And you can find this in upstairs. I'm at, the, I'm at the Moonrise Towers. I'm in the second stairs. Okay. Uh, Catherick's office is just over here. All right. Here's, here's the big door to get to Catherick. Go over here. Go over here. Go over here. Bang, bang. And it'll be in the rooms with the bed. The room with the bed. All right. And if you go here a little earlier, there might be a little dog running around. You might have to make some charisma checks. But if you go here later, after after the whole Moonrise Tower raid, you'll be able to just loot everything on your own pretty safely. And it'll be in this chest right here. Cloak of Elemental Absorption. The Waking Mind. If you're wondering what these random minds slash brain containers are for, uh, they are for this moment right here. Okay. And this is, I think this is the best one. For my research this is the best one you can find this one after fighting that whole room of uh, undead creatures and solving this very easy brain puzzle okay it'll be back here in the waking mind and you take this to i'm just gonna go ahead and do it live so y'all know exactly where i'm going we are we are at the end of act two by the way you know at uh at the place or Catherick the necrotic laboratory where catherick has been doing his bullshit right so we're gonna go over here uh, this is balthazar's secret lane secret secret uh, laboratory okay we're gonna take this over here and we're gonna put this inside here and then you gotta make some checks and if you and if you make the checks so after you insert it you could you could put in these by the way it basically it, it's like a, it's like it, it's a brain so this 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 head right here will um will portray that brain and act whoever is acting with it okay and this is a special one because if you interact with it and make some checks you get something special so let's go ahead and do that bam, bam, bam. all right and once you so they're gonna ask you to basically destroy their mind so they're not trapped in their own brain and if you do that they will give you this which gives you advantage on intelligent saving throws which is very similar to a ring that you can get from act one but this is a permanent buff might as well have it um there are not too that there are not too many mind flare fights in this game but when there are and they cast mind blast and if you get stunned that's really really bad <laughs> okay and this um, you know, put this on your carry character, on your main character or whatever, and they'll have advantage on intelligence saving throws, mainly against mind flares, okay? Catherick Thorm, the boss of Act 2. You probably know what items he already has, but just in case you don't, just in case you missed it, here they are, okay? His Warhammer, cool. It does an extra 1d4 psychic, cool, you know what I'm saying? Wait, does it? Or is it just one of my effects? I think it's one of my effects, but in any case, boom, there you go. Actually, there's a, there's a way I can check that. No, so his weapon does do an extra 1d4 psychic. Okay, cool, whatever, whatever. It comes with this stuff. Backbreaker, concuss to smash, weakening strike, not bad. His armor, his armor is not bad as well. 19 AC, reduced damage. When activated, you can't be moved, so you can't be shoved, okay? Um, and it comes with Howl of Dead, which, um, numbs all nearby creatures as a bonus action what does numb do movement speed is halved spell cast has advantage on attack rolls against the affected entity okay uh, and you could it could be removed by help sure not bad um but the best item that i think he has and that i think you guys can agree with me on is his shield and the reason why is because of the first line plus one bonus to spell save dc and spell attack rolls okay and you can combine this with melf's first staff which is what i'm going to do immediately after i get out of this fight um and that just gives, makes my spell caster even stronger okay 
and of course you can get this off of his dead body once you do the fight and I guess I should, I should I should give some pointers on the fight when the fight starts starts you're gonna see Night Song over here all trapped um, the way I, li I like to do this fight is I like to turn someone invis invis ungroup them from the party like this ungroup them turn them invis with the potion of invisibility or cast in the invisibility spell on them have them go over here and help Night Song and now you're gonna fight you're gonna start the fight against Kethrick with Night Song already he uh, freed and she does quite a bit of damage too so there's that boom but yeah other than that there you go that's Kethrick Thor's items including his busted ass shield boots of uninhibited Kushigo the wearer deals additional damage equal to their wisdom modifier with unarmed strikes and this of course is the best in slot for any and all monk builds well assuming they do unarmed strikes which they should because flurry of blows is kind of crazy okay and um you can just get this by playing the normal storyline it is off the body of one of the the gith yankees that are here protecting orpheus's dumbass over here uh, their name is prelate liddy kick and they have the boots of uninhibited kushigo <laughs> and there you have it y'all those are the best items that i was able to find in act two Baldur's Gate 3. If there, again, if there are any items that you felt should have belonged on this list, any items that I missed, you know, then let me know because I may not even know about that item, right? Because there are different playthroughs you could do the good guy playthrough, the bad guy playthrough, the middle guy playthrough, the no guy playthrough. All right, there's so many ways you could play this game that you can't get anything in one playthrough. You just can't. That's impossible. Well, I mean, it may not be impossible. I'm sure someone's figured it out, but. Yeah, if there's like, uh, if you're playing one of those murder hobo campaigns and you're just killing off everyone, then you probably get every single item that's available in the game. Um, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, if I, if, if there are any items that you think I missed, let me know. Feel free to let me know in the comments. You know, the more we share the knowledge of this game, the better. There's so much stuff in this freaking game that I for sure missed something. So let me know that down in the comments. And hey, if you enjoyed the video, y'all know what to do. Like comment subscribe all that hit the bell algorithm stuff it really does help clicking clicking around and clicking that subscribe and hitting the bell that stuff actually matters in like the freaking youtube analytics so you know please leave a comment and all that type shit if you got five seconds of spare time it actually does help please please all right um and yeah i'm pretty i'm probably gonna be releasing an act three version as soon as i'm done i ju i literally just finished act two okay and i'm about to head into act three and then we're gonna do all that too and act three oh there are so many good i mean act three has the best ha act three has the best items as as it should being act three but there's so many legendaries so many uh rare items in act three that i can't wait to show you guys but act one and act two are now finished and i hope you all enjoyed it all right i'll see you on next video thanks for watching i appreciate it